Uh, so welcome all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Miles. I'm the head of marketing at Hospitable. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Hospitable does, Hospitable gives short-term rental hosts their valuable time back. Founded in 2016, we make short-term rental hosting trivial for over 10,000 hosts with tools such as AI-powered automation messaging, automated task scheduling for your team, a synchronized calendar to prevent double bookings across Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and your direct booking website, and a centralized inbox to respond to all of your guests across different channels in one place. We're also in the process of rolling out our long-awaited, full-featured direct booking solution. Using our direct premium product, hosts will be able to use our professional, easy-to-customize website templates or drop our booking widget into their existing setup. Uh, they'll also be able to process online payments with ease, with Hospitable as the merchant of record, have sales on lodging taxes automatically calculated and collected, and accept bookings with the confidence of integrated guest vetting powered by Autohost and $5 million worth of damage protection uh, powered by Superhog. Uh, you can find out more about that at hospitable.com. So let's get to the main reason we're all here today, though. Uh, so for today's Hospitable Masterclass, we're joined by Arthur Kolker. Uh, founder and CEO of Stayfi. Uh, Arthur is a leading expert expert, sorry, uh, and innovator in Wi-Fi marketing services for vacation rentals and is here to teach us about building a brand for your direct booking short-term rentals. Uh, welcome, Arthur. So glad to have you join us today. Uh, thanks for having me, Miles. I'm really excited about this class. Cool. So uh, perhaps we could start with uh, you giving a little introduction to yourself uh, and maybe introducing uh, the audience to Stayfi uh, and your services. Sure. Yeah, my name is Arthur Kolker. I'm the founder and CEO of Stayfi, which I started way back in 2018. Um, and Stayfi was founded with the mission to help short-term rental operators of all size develop their own brand and become less dependent on the big OTAs. So while we believe that we're always going to use channels like Airbnb and Verbo, uh, we think every host or rental manager should be empowered to build their own brand, drive direct bookings, and have more power and ownership over their business. Um, and we do that through a variety of ways, but the main one is through guest data collection and marketing. So using our Wi-Fi marketing tools, every guest in your properties has to log into the Wi-Fi to access the internet, just like you do at a coffee shop, airport, hotel. And that way we collect data, not just from the booker, but from the entire guest party. And then we have a bunch of integrated tools to do marketing to all those guests so that you can make sure that every time they travel again, uh, uh, they're at least considering booking direct with you again in the future. Excellent. Sounds good. Uh, we'll obviously get into the nitty gritty of that uh, a bit more as we get into the session. Um, just a few things, though, before we get going, uh, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, so this question always comes up, so I'll cover it off to start. Uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, so if you do miss anything today, uh, you can catch it on YouTube. Um, we'll also email the link out to that um, in a couple of days to make sure everyone has it. Um, I'm going to start today's masterclass with a few questions from myself to Arthur. Uh, and then also open it up to the audience for Q&A at the end. So uh, there's a Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Uh, feel free to start asking your questions in there. And um, we also have Talia today from Stayfi that's helping out, um, answering a few questions, uh, typing those out for anything uh, very specific to your Stayfi account. Um, but uh, I think that's everything. Uh, so let's get things started, shall we, Arthur? Awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I think for anyone here who isn't aware of direct bookings, uh, why are direct bookings uh, so important uh, these days? Yeah, I would say that, you know, in the past few years, we've seen more and more emphasis in the short term rental world around developing an independent brand and driving more direct bookings. But you may be wondering, you know, I'm getting all my bookings from Airbnb and Verbo. Why do I need to do my own website? Uh, there's definitely a few reasons. One is direct bookings. You have control over all the policies around that booking, whether it's your contract, your cancellation policy, anything like that. And we know that those things can arbitrarily change you know, at any time. Uh, so it gives you total control over that. The second is saving on OTA fees. Well, you may not think you're spending a ton of money on marketing. You really are. Because every time someone makes a booking through one of the third-party platforms, 
they're paying anywhere between 10 and 15% of the whole booking to those platforms. So that's a lot of money that you have the opportunity to capture into your own business uh, when you start driving more direct bookings. And the third one is really building that repeat, reliable book of guests. Even if you think in the old term, you know, old hospitality days, people used to have the, you know, their book of their top guests that they would call, you know, to book again or send the mailers. Um, so you can imagine you're paying these third party tools a bunch of money to drive bookings to your short term rentals. If you can capture some of them as loyal guests, uh, it's the cheapest way of getting rebookings is to start email marketing mm -hmm. or other ways of bringing them back to you directly so that you can supplement the bookings you're getting uh, from those third party sites. Great. So, yeah, I guess it's um, a, a large part of that is, is control of your business um, and really kind of determining how you're going to um, get more bookings uh, on your own, as opposed to having to rely on a third party service and having to pay for that third party service as well. Exactly. And we don't know how those third party services are going to change in the future, right? So algorithms can change. So you could be top of the search and then they change to categories and suddenly you're not at the top of the search anymore. Um, you know, their fee structures can change, which has already happened several times. Unfortunately, mm. there isn't a lot of competition in the OTA space. So it's not like there's five giant channels competing for your business. It's pretty concentrated, at least in the US between two companies. Um, so just having the ability to rely on uh, a third really important source for your business um, is something that is worth investing in. It can be more of a long-term investment, but we see customers um, who, after focusing on direct bookings and a variety of strategies we can discuss, are getting 30% and over of all their bookings directly. And that's definitely the target we aim for at StayFi to get people at least above that 30% benchmark. Right. Yeah. So I guess the, the next big elephant in the room, next big questions, because we're, we're talking about brand and we're talking about direct booking. So um, what is a brand? You know, give us the definition of what a brand is and, and why is it important to build a brand for your direct booking website? Yeah, I mean, we interact with brands every day and we're all consumers of brands. So we're pretty familiar with how they work, at least from that standpoint. And there's a reason why consumers attribute value to brands, even when the products are not differentiated at all. So if you go to a drugstore or supermarket, you know, people sell Tylenol versus acetaminophen. They're the same exact chemical, but people are willing to pay a few dollars extra to buy the branded Tylenol product. And those brand attributes people feel towards it could be more trust. It could be just like impression in terms of, you know, you've seen this brand a million times and so you intrinsically believe it will be more effective, right? So we, you know, brands typically are what invokes feelings amongst consumers towards certain products or services, right? And so well, the unfortunate thing that happens in our space today is that people are creating amazing hospitality experiences for guests, but the brand value is not being attributed to the actual provider of those services. Unfortunately, today it's typically being attributed to Airbnb, which is why people say they booked an Airbnb or they're staying in an Airbnb, right? So you're creating a great experience, but you're giving all that brand value to another company that's actually taking a big percentage of your revenue, right? So it's hard. It's very hard in this industry just because we have, you know, the Kleenex, right? Even you know, people buy things that aren't Kleenex, but mm. call them Kleenex, right? It's the same example. Um, so we have a difficult mission to educate guests that who is actually providing the great experience and who they should attribute that value towards. And so by creating your own brand, you can start to at least shift the mindset of the guests that stay with you, uh, that your brand is the one creating their great experiences and that they should come to you directly when they want to have that same great experience again, just because there's so many wonderful things typically associated with travel, whether it's spending time with family, seeing friends, going on events, like people are doing so many amazing things at these destinations of these different types of rentals that people operate, uh, that we really should try to help everyone in the industry build value for their individual brand. Definitely. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you made a good comment in there of, of people often say, I, you know, I booked an Airbnb. Uh, we definitely hear people that are kind of moving towards direct say that, 
you know, they want to move away from being an Airbnb business and they want to be a short term rental business or a vacation rental business. You know, they want to build their own business and not be tied to Airbnb or Verbo or Booking.com too much. Yeah. And they'll always be there. I mean, hotels have fantastic, amazing brands, whether they're mm-hmm. giant chains or, you know, boutique hotels. And they list on every OTA under the sun, um, but they don't call themselves a booking.com, right? So we should at least take ownership of of the business that we're all running here and, you know, really present that first. And we can talk about ways of taking the steps to start figuring out what your brand is and how you want to develop it uh, for guests to experience. I mean, that's that's the perfect segue into my next question. You know, how do you start building a brand and, and you know, what are some of the, the you know, initial stepping stones for doing that? Yeah, I'd say for most, you know, the demographic of the hospitable host um, typically, you know, is owner operator or starting out as a property manager, right? And so typically you're local operating in one city. And so I would lean into your strengths and what's your strength versus a big mega brand, right? It's like you're not Vacasa or Sonder, so what are you? And I really think we see the most successful brands leaning into the local aspect of their business. You know, they live there. They're the experts in the space, right? Um, you know, it's a personal business. Their face is associated with it. So if you're that type of host where you are trying to build that more personal relationship with guests or at least present yourself as a face of the business, that's kind of the most obvious one to lean into where you've tied yourself very closely to a local market, present yourselves as the experts in that local area and really put a face to the business. So that way, uh, as you're educating guests about your brand, it's not just about maybe, you know, Grants and Missouri retreats or, you know, whatever your area is you're in, it's also the who is they're communicating with. Um, and that's you as the host. Um, and that way they're associating all the great experiences they're having, not just to the rental property, your brand, but also to maybe you. And that works really well at the smaller scale. It's different when you grow to be very large professional property management company, because then obviously you can't offer those same personalized experiences because they don't scale. Um, And that's where we really see more leaning into the consistency, high quality homes for groups, amenities and extra services that you can't find or book easily through Airbnb. So we look at, you know, Avant Stay or like these bigger brands, that's really what they're leading with. Um, So it's really finding what your unique angle or approach is, and then building what are the attributes that you want guests to really take away when they leave your property, understanding what those are, and just focusing on a few that you think that you can deliver on for guests. Oh, okay. Uh, And then where where does StayFi fit into this um, in terms of kind of helping you to build that brand and helping you to increase uh, direct bookings? Yeah, I mean, there's a few things that I would encourage people to do before they come to StayFi. So I'll just talk about those first. Okay, great. To StayFi. Um, I'd say one is developing the brand identity. There's a lot of very accessible services out there to develop something like a logo, understand your like scheme on printed and also digital materials. Uh, because you want to think about how can I put my brand in front of my guests in as many different places as possible, not just a website, which we can talk about too. Um, So definitely, you know, Fiverr, Upwork, you can get a full set of brand, like iconography, typeset, everything you need, you know, for a few hundred bucks, including business cards, takeaways in the home, branded coasters, whatever it is, uh, fridge magnets. There's all sorts of creative ways we see uh, people start implementing that brand identity in the home just so that guests are seeing it multiple times during the stay. Websites also very important uh, because obviously once you develop a brand and guests know who you are, they need a place to go and make a booking or submit an inquiry to book. Um, I know Hospitable has a great uh, booking website tool, and that's where we see most people go first. So uh, they'll use the tool in their property management software to develop that website with all the branding that they've hopefully you know acquired and that they're happy with and it represents who they are. And on that website, you can start talking about the about us, about who you are, about why you love the area that you're operating in, all those things that are going to make you differentiate yourself from a generic Airbnb, right? Um, and then, you know, beyond that, as people develop and get much larger, then sometimes they go and they purchase like a more custom website 
from a company like Boostly or ICND where you're getting a website, a blog, like, you know, but that's really when people have like 20, 30, 50 plus properties is we see people get these professional websites made. Uh, so the hospitable website is, you know, a great product that you guys can use right out of the gate to start driving more folks to a website that will convert for bookings. Um, so those are the typical things that we want to have in place before we move on to Stafi as a solid understanding of who you are and what you offer and some digital place where people can go and, and book you or submit inquiries to book. Then the question is, now that I have an identity and a website, how can I start actually driving people to book there? And there's different places that you can go to start doing that. Uh, we think Stafi is the obvious first best solution uh, because um, the people who stay with you are the ones that are going to be the most likely to book with you again. It's really hard to go out, especially as a new brand and advertise on Facebook or do Google search and have the trust level to have like a new prospect come to your website and convert to book. Um, but if it's somebody who travels to your area often and who stayed with you one time, it's a lot easier to have them come and rebook you directly, especially when you offer them some additional incentive or some part of saving on some of those OTA fees to do so. Uh, so what Stayify does is first introduce your brand to everyone in the property, like I mentioned previously. So all the guests come to the home, they log into the Wi-Fi, they select the network, and they'll see your brand on a custom branded pop-up. So they'll see, you know, welcome to second home stays, you know, we manage this property. Thank you for coming. If you have any questions, here's how you reach us and enter your information to get access to the Wi-Fi. They enter their name and email. And once they've done that, you've captured who they are. And then we can start marketing to them. So that's the first touch point is introducing them to the brand. The second thing is then emailing them or starting the process of email marketing. In Stayfy, we have an email marketing tool as well. And in that tool, you can set up automations. So you can trigger an email whenever a guest logs into the Wi-Fi. And that we find is the most effective way to get really important information in front of the guest, as well as to explain to them the value of booking direct. Um, and this can be really helpful because typically when you're communicating with a guest prior to stay, you're only communicating with the booker, right? So through hospitable, through automations, through you know Airbnb, you're talking with the booker. Now, when we have the whole party in the home and they log into the Wi-Fi, uh, you have now have access to the other guests. And they're also great potential people who may want to stay with you again. Uh, so in that first email, you can share some information around the property and the property management business that maybe you've only shared with the booker or links to things like a digital guidebook you have for your home or just a link to the guidebook for the home at all. Uh, so you're sharing that information with the whole party. And we see those emails get, you know, 60 plus percent open rates because it's very timely in the home uh, when the guest logs into the Wi-Fi. Amazing. That's such a high open rate, um, you know, from a, a marketing perspective. Um, I know yeah, that yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, and, and just on that, I guess, because obviously email marketing is a very important part of your business. Um, what are some of the other ways that email marketing can be used and, and what's using email marketing too much? If you get I me, mean, there's there's obviously a line between uh, marketing to um, your guests and it being spammy if spammy, you go too yeah. far. Yeah. So so you know how do hosts kind of balance that? Yeah. So what I recommend for most hosts, especially when they're starting out, is to just start with automation. So it's a big ask to start, let's say, writing a monthly newsletter, right, about things or new content in your destination uh, because you're very busy and you have a ton of other things to do and this might not even be your full-time job, right? Uh, so the great thing about an automation is like I mentioned before, you can set up an email that's triggered right when they log into the Wi-Fi. You can also trigger emails that are sent 20, 30, 50, 80 days after. Um, and so you can really spend the time to craft one series of emails that gets sent to all your guests. And so you only go through this content creation, you know, one time, and then you can come back to it much later once guests have gone through that cycle. So as an example, you can set up an email when the guest logs in, then you can set up an email in 10 days, you know, thanking them for staying with you and explaining how to book again. Then you can send an email 30 days out, featuring maybe all your listings and thanking them again for staying and letting them know these are all the options if you want to come back to 
X location. And then in another 30 days, you could send an email that are like five reasons to return to X and talk about like the five events in your area that people come back for. Um, and then you can send another email in 30 days being like reasons to travel for X or Y or featuring a new home or something like that. And so you can think of, you know, five to eight emails you send over six months. Um, and that way you've created all of that in one go in a few hours, and then everybody will get those emails. I really have been, I'm putting out a new content piece soon about also having chat GPT help you write those emails. Cause that's something I've been doing a lot lately. So I'll show you how, you know, you can just write in, you know, write an email about three reasons to come back to Branson, Missouri, and it will basically write 80% of what you need. Right. So that can also be a way to quickly come up with content, uh, when you don't have necessarily, uh, new ideas. Um, and so once you set up that automation, that's a great place to start. So that's what we typically recommend. Then once your list gets to a certain size, like over a thousand contacts, you may want to consider layering in additional, most frequently would be every two weeks. I think a month is a great starting point. Month newsletter where you just update your audience about, you know, new properties, different events that are coming up in the area, potentially different discounts. Um, one other thing we see people have a lot of success with is cancellations. So you have like somebody cancels for Thanksgiving and it's one of your top weeks and it's like two weeks out, sending an email out to your whole list, uh, letting them know like, hey, this home had cancellation and we have a deal now to fill it, right? Uh, so those really time-driven emails are also really valuable and people find really interesting because maybe they were looking for something to do and this just came to them at the right time. And we have a text marketing tool as well where you can do that. And we find those timely messages are really effective there. So dealing with cancellations or special events or promos or new home announcements as well can be a really effective thing to email about. Um, so definitely start with automations. And then once the, uh, the audience gets to a certain size, that's when I consider investing in periodic content to be more valuable. Uh, and what kind of size are you thinking uh, for the audience when you say- Like at least a thousand contacts. Um, and the cool thing, I know we're gonna talk about our integration, but what our integration with Hospitable does is we actually go through all the guests in Hospitable that have stayed with you. And anytime we've collected a real email, we will pull it into StayFi's email marketing tool. So that way you will have some history, hopefully of guest data to start with. Uh, that Hospitable has been collecting for you. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the times we don't get any information for certain OTA bookings, but whatever you do have will get sucked in automatically and also on an ongoing basis. So when you do start sending newsletters, uh, you should have a bit more of an audience to get pride with than what we're just collecting through the Wi-Fi. Nice. Yeah, I guess that's a, a big advantage of, of integrating with a tool like Hospitable is you're getting even more data um, and even more opportunities to market to your guests. Exactly. Yeah, we want to have all the data in one place. Uh, and of course, with our tool, you can also place like widgets on a website. Uh, I know with the Hospitable website, you can place code in the header. And so you can place code from our email tool that will like drive a pop up and that pop up can say, you know, get a coupon if you submit your email, and then you set up a little automation that sends that code to the person once they submit it. So there's a bunch of ways to collect emails. Obviously, think, you know, we believe that getting them from all your guests is number one, uh, but then there's a lot of valuable data in Hospitable, and then we can also collect data uh, from people who visit your website as well. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, so uh, I think you kind of mentioned this at the start, but um, obviously there's some people that kind of joined late and, you know, we're obviously talking about building a direct brand for many people here. Um, they're probably just starting out. Um, what's some of the reasonable targets to set for, you know, when you're first going out and building your direct brand, you know, you, maybe you're on Airbnb or Verbo at the moment. Um, you're trying to get your first bookings. What's a good target for, you know, your first year of, of direct bookings, how many, uh, bookings should be going via direct, how many via Airbnb, uh, what are we aiming for? Yeah. I mean, I really, it really depends kind of what you have to start with. Um, if you've been diligent about collecting, some guest data or hopefully at least booker data uh and you see those people book you multiple times i say this is always the best indicator if you go through your ota bookings and you see people have booked you multiple times on an airbnb or verbo that means they have a high propensity to convert into repeat bookers it's definitely different by destination type so 
seasonal like beach drive to destinations Hawaii it's you know there are people that make an annual trip and those folks are super easy to convert into direct bookings I'd say urban like business travel is more challenging just because you know people may only visit you know Memphis one time and stay your listing and not come back um, so the more, you know, the more you see that organically happening, just the more successful you're going to be at converting people into repeat guests. Um, you can be successful, obviously, in any type, but it's just kind of like how soon should you expect success? You should have a good sense of, you know, how often the same people are already booking you again, hopefully. Um, but I think first year out, it's like anything between five to like 15% of your bookings once you focus on it. I think that's a reasonable goal to set for direct. We see people hit that 30% mark more like two years out and they have a website and they have, you know, a robust list of their marketing too. And they also are presenting their brand and some other channels or other opportunities. They may also be billboarding. So you want to have your listings on OTAs, say your brand, because guests are getting more sophisticated and they will go Google the brand and find your website and then book with you when they find that it may be slightly cheaper. Um, so definitely just thinking of different opportunities to have guests who are searching for your rental or have stayed with you before find your brand so they can come to your website and see if the, they have availability, you have availability to book, which can be another issue. On the smaller end is you may have people who want to come back, but if you only have a few uh, listings, you may not always have availability uh, for when those people want to book. So one thing that we find really successful is in the automations or in your email marketing to include some plain text emails that are written from you or someone on your team. Uh, so it appears as if you're writing them spontaneously and if they're planning to return, because uh, we find that's a way if, you know, they may go to the website and not see exactly what they want, but if you can initiate a conversation, uh, then maybe you can find uh, time to slot them in or have them, you know, book uh, a window that works for them with one of your properties, uh, especially at smaller scale, that kind of one-to-one -one conversation can be really valuable. Cool. Um, so... Before we move on to audience Q&A, and just a reminder, folks, uh, feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, any more kind of channels that you want to mention as, as you know, ways of building a brand and, and kind of growing direct bookings? We've talked a lot about email, obviously. Uh, we've talked a bit about website. Um, anything else that you kind of want to mention and call out as kind of a, a tip for our audience here? Yeah, I think, you know, we see a lot of operators uh, use social media to some of, uh, some effect both Facebook and Instagram really being the, you know, where I see the most activity. I think especially at a very small scale, there are a lot of Facebook groups associated with traveling to certain destinations um, where they only like accept direct bookings. So definitely I would research that about your destination because we have a lot of hosts that use those to kind of direct people who are looking to their website. Uh, the second is doing some social media advertising. Um, I saw one of the questions about this, but you can actually place a Facebook marketing pixel on your stay five splash pages and create a remarketing audience in Facebook advertising, which is a little more sophisticated, uh, but that gives you the opportunity to, let's say, just advertise to only people that have stayed with you and logging through the splash page. And you can also take the email list out of stay five and upload it into Facebook using a custom audience. Um, and we see that very targeted advertising is another way to uh, engage with your past guests on social media so that they remember your brand and come back to rebook with you. I'd say the harder methods that people have success with at scale is search engine marketing and search engine optimization. That's very challenging at the beginning just because your website isn't going to have a lot of authority to appear in Google search. But as you grow and have more listings and reviews on your website, which is super important, uh, and depending where you're located, it may be easier or harder to start appearing in organic search on the first page. You know, if we Google like Thai B vacation rentals, there are local property managers who actually beat out Airbnb and Verbo on those searches and are ranked number one. Um, and that just takes time and effort to get backlinks and develop authority and have a large brand presence. So it's definitely achievable. It's just a longer term investment that can really pay off. Search engine marketing is the same thing. 
because it's very competitive and you're competing against OTAs that are very sophisticated. Uh, so it's a way that I've seen people actually lose a lot of money. Um, so definitely, if you're going to try that, I would engage with an agency that has experience in the space, just because search engine marketing is a way to to blow a lot of money and not get much results. Um, but one cool thing that I talked to Hospitable about before is their websites are enabled with Google e-commerce. So if you are familiar with Google Analytics, the e-commerce settings kind of take it to the next level where you can attribute bookings back to email marketing and or search marketing or whatever you're doing. And there's some very cool conversion pathways that you can look on in Google Analytics where you can actually see uh, not just the last click, so email, then they booked, you can actually see email, website, website, email, Instagram, email, website. So you can see that guests are not just last clicking on your email and then booking, uh, they will interact with your brand multiple places before placing a booking. And that's really important to remember that you might send an email and not get a booking in that moment, uh, but that may play an important path part in a pathway to a booking uh, that a future guest is going to go through. I see. Yeah. So I guess it's um, a case of don't expect success overnight necessarily. Um, it's kind of a slow I mean, process. You... Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the amazing thing about Airbnb and Verbo is that you can put up a listing and get a lot of bookings, right? Um, so, you know, undoing that or becoming less dependent on that, it just takes time and effort to develop that loyal brand audience. Um, but it's mm -hmm. definitely worthwhile because it will make your business more profitable and resilient. One thing we just didn't touch upon, which I'll mention briefly, is brands for owners. So if you happen to be a property manager, your brand is as or even more important for the owners in your portfolio, because we all know adding a new owner can be super valuable. Um, so this audience that you develop, even through StayFi, we see a lot of success cross-promoting your property management side of your business, uh, because often guests are the type of people who will purchase a property and then have it managed. So we see a lot of people who are running like real estate property management business use the guest list to also drive leads for their real estate and property management business. And it also gives you a leg up over your competitors having a strong guest brand, just because you can imagine if you're going to talk to owners, if you have a list of 10,000 loyal brand guests versus somebody who only lists on OTAs, uh, that gives you an upper hand at driving more bookings for their properties and more profitable direct bookings at that. So uh, that brand building is important for both sides of the business um, if you are a property manager. Awesome. Sounds good. Cool. So um, I think it's time to hand it over to the audience and, and go through some of this uh, Q&A uh, that's slowly building up. Um, Tally is doing a great job of, of clearing through some. Uh, I think there's definitely some that we can call out because um, I think they're applicable to everyone as well. Then. Um, so I think first off um, is a, a great question. Um, I, I can't find who asked it now, but uh, the question is essentially, um, is there a referral code for our hospitable audience here um, for signing up to StayFi. I think someone wants a discount. Yeah, so you can, the code when you go to StayFi and you sign up is hospitable. So we made it very simple. And that will give you 50% uh, off the first three months of our service. And just to kind of explain the setup process with StayFi is um, you can use StayFi anywhere in the world um, using any underlying internet service. Uh, there's kind of two steps. The first is you purchase a device from us called an access point that plugs into your existing router and broadcasts a new Wi-Fi network in the home uh, that we call the guest network that guests can use to get on the internet and get the splash page. And you typically will leave the existing Wi-Fi running. So if you have a bunch of TVs or thermostats, door locks on your current internet, that can stay on the old Wi-Fi. Uh, when you add the access point, there'll just be a new network that you tell guests to join instead of the old network. And what's nice is that network is the same in all properties. So if you manage 50 homes, for instance, uh, and you add StayFi, you have one network across all the homes that guests are being asked to join. So it really simplifies the Wi-Fi process for guests, let's say, uh, because you're not having to give out different names and passwords based on the property. Um, so it's just one simple set of directions for everybody. 
Um, and so that's kind of the process of how you get StayFi started. And we sell those devices in the US and Canada. And then outside of the US and Canada, we let you know where to buy them in your jurisdiction, and then we can set them up with you remotely. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, and then I think a good question also from Jenny is, um, you know, you've got set up, you, you're starting to um, invite people to, you know, your Wi-Fi network and, and uh, sign up to email marketing, essentially. Um, what do you see is, um, you know, what's the typical opt-in rate there? Do you see quite a high amount of people willing to kind of opt into the email marketing or do a lot of people leave that box unchecked and, and just want to get on the Wi-Fi as quick as possible? Yeah, so we have a few different ways to set up the opt-in checkbox. And it does vary also about where, vary by where you're located because there's some different rules, different places. Um, but I'd say the typical setup we recommend is that you have an opt-in checkbox, but you have it pre-checked. So the person would have to uncheck it to opt out. And when we have that, we get like around a 70 to 80% opt-in rate. I also noticed a question about garbage emails. Uh, we actually use another service called Zero Bounce, which checks whether the email is real or not. Um, and if it's real, we let them on the Wi-Fi. And if it's not real, they'll ask to enter another one. Um, if it doesn't know if it's real or not, it just lets them on anyway. So we always err on the side of letting people on the internet because obviously preventing people from getting online would be a big problem for you. Um, but that way, if they enter like totally garbage stuff, it won't uh, allow them to proceed. Perfect. Um, and then on the subject of garbage, um, what if you have kind of a garbage guest? Um, so someone that's undesirable, they've maybe broken your house rules. Obviously, you didn't know that until after the stay. So you've already collected their email address. Um, how easy is it to kind of remove them from any email marketing? You know, you don't want to be inviting them to come and stay again. You don't want to send them a discount code to book with you for a second time. Yeah, so you can go in and just unsubscribe them from the email tool or delete their contact. If you unsubscribe them, they can't be emailed ever again. So it's pretty easy to go and remove them so you're not marketing to them in the future. Sounds easy enough. Good stuff. Um, so someone just asking, and I see Tally is writing the reply, but um, I think it's a good question for everyone. Um, how much do the devices cost? Um, so what's a ballpark figure? You know, if someone's got a decent amount of properties, they're probably thinking about having to buy a few of these. Yeah, so typically it's one per home. Uh, we have two different models depending on the size of the property. We have like a light that's more appropriate for like a condo or a small like three, two, three bedroom home. That's 125. And then we have a device called the long range, which is more for like four, five, six bedroom property. And that one's 205. Um, and then for larger orders, we like have a we have a financing program. So we have customers that want to pay over 12 months. And so they can do that as well. Um, and then in addition, I would say for property managers, they typically not, it's not all the time, but they often will pass part of the hardware costs on to owners, uh, just depending on how that relationship is set up, because it can be pretty different by property manager. But, uh, a lot of them have found a way to pass this on to owners just because the primary beneficiary is the owner for kind of two main reasons. One is we didn't even talk about Wi-Fi monitoring. So uh, outside of all the marketing piece, we also do occupancy alerting, outage alerting. So we have a get, provide a lot more visibility into what's happening on the Wi-Fi and in the home. And with Hospitable, we even do dynamic occupancy alerting. So if there's four guests booked, but we see eight unique people using the Wi-Fi, we'll, we, we will alert you. And that's so that protects the homes. And then on the marketing side, uh, the most frequent rebooking behavior is to book the same property again. Uh, so we're really, the investment is helping drive more bookings for that owner that are coming directly to you as the property manager. Okay, that's, that's pretty interesting to hear as well. There's an added element of kind of keeping your property secure and, and kind of party free, uh, which obviously we know that you know, parties can cause issues with neighbors and and you kind of Absolutely. jeopardize. Yeah. yeah, so you can even kick people off the internet. So you can block them if you have squatters, which we've come across as well. So all sorts of scenarios have come up. Um, we even had uh, like people break into homes and throw parties. And we had 
people log into the Wi-Fi with their real information and we are able to provide that to them. So all sorts of interesting things that we can uh, assist with when you have that kind of live view of who's in the property at any time. Wow, Arthur, I think you've got some good stories to tell us here. There's uh, <laughs> plenty of yeah. interesting tales. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, we actually have a couple of people with their hands raised. Uh, so let's have a go uh, invite them uh, to ask us their question live. Sometimes this works. Uh, sometimes we have some connection issues. So let's give it a go with uh, Richard first. Uh, Richard, do you want to let us know your question? See what I mean by there's always uh, an issue or two. Um, Richard, if you're still there. Uh, he is muted, so. Yeah. And he's loaded his hand now as well. So I'm going to assume that uh, Richard so no. has changed the mind. Yeah, so we'll we'll try Peter. We'll see if we have better luck with Peter. Peter, do you have a question for Arthur? Sure. Uh, I think, so uh, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm the one that had the question about, uh, you know, how many devices you mentioned, like rooms in a uh, in a house we have, we deal with strictly apartments right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we have 19 apartments in one building. Uh, and of course, <laughs> uh, our uh, internet provider requires us to have internet uh, 19 times, right? So, uh, so we would need sounds like 19 of those devices so that that seems like it'd be pretty costly yeah so i'll say, I'll say a few things multi-family can get more complex just because there's many different ways that the internet can be set up so you know we can have a setup where there's one router and switch and only one internet subscription for the whole building or we can kind of come to this more traditional apartment setting where every unit has its own modem router from the ISP. I'd say on that scenario, one other benefit that we have helped people achieve, especially if they're master leasing and they're actually paying for the internet or they own the structure and they're paying for the internet, um, is using the mesh network capability to reduce the number of paid internet subscriptions in the building. Uh, because one key difference is like even if you kept all 19 routers and you plugged all 19 access points in, um, guests will see it on our end through our network. Instead of 19 different networks, they'll only see one network. We'll just call it Peter's Guest Network. And when the guests log into Peter's Guest Network, their device becomes authorized on all the access points you purchased from us. So even though there's different routers behind them, when they walk around the building, they actually stand one internet network. Um, and in the same way, we can do that where, uh, like in every other unit, we remove the internet subscription and we have an access point plugged into power that's acting as a mesh or no access point at all, depending on the size. Um, and that way you can create one building-wide mesh network that's leveraging some number of underlying internet connections uh, for that whole space. Um, and so we have someone on our team when people have more complex networking needs that can take a floor plan, for instance, and recommend access point placement. So I'd say the process for single family homes is more straightforward just because it's typically one device per home. If the home is ginormous, uh, we may use two devices and one is a wireless mesh. When it comes to multifamily, it can get more complicated just because we can encounter a lot of different uh, internet setups, depending on whether it was built as like a motel or a apartment complex. Um, or there may be situations where we can't use Stafi at all just because the building has their own Wi-Fi network that's controlled by an HOA, right? And we can't touch that. So uh, those questions, definitely we can help with one-on-one -on -one just depending on what the situation is. Okay, thanks. Uh, glad there are other possibilities and I've already made an appointment with Talia. Awesome. Well, Thank thanks, you so Peter. much. Perfect. Thank you, Peter. Uh, great. Uh, so one other question that I uh, saw kind of come up in Q&A uh, and chat a couple of times was around text messaging. I think we kind of glossed over it because we, we talked quite a lot about email. Just give us an overview of what we can do with text messaging with StayFi, please, Arthur. Yeah. So text messaging, the way it works in StayFi is once you turn on text messaging or collecting numbers in your StayFi account, 
um, there's a new opt-in box on your splash page. Because for text marketing, we have to collect an explicit opt-in from guests. Um, and we can't have the same kind of pre-checked functionality we have for email sometimes. Um, so the opt-in rate's always going to be lower, like 20, 30 percent. Um, but the upside is the open rates and read rates for text messages are like above 98%, right? So lower opt-in rate, but much higher engagement. Um, and then there's three campaigns within Statify that you can set up. One is a welcome. So very similar to the welcome email, you can have a welcome text. Uh, for Statify, you can actually set per property um, merge fields. So like a listing URL or a guidebook URL. So that way you can have one welcome text message where it's dynamically inserting things like the property name, a link to a guidebook. So let's say you use a touch day or folio guidebook, which are great digital guidebook products that are different for each home. Uh, you have a unique URL for each guidebook. When you send the welcome text, it can have a link to the guidebook for that specific home. So you have one welcome message, but it's sending to the guests in that property, the guidebook for the home that they're in right at that time. So lots of cool things you can do with the welcome message. We also have a rate and review message that we send via text. So you pick a certain number of days, let's say two days in, and it will send a link to the guest to review. If they rate you five stars, you can then prompt the guest to review you on Google, Facebook, or your own site if you have reviews there. Or if they leave you less than five stars, they leave you private feedback. And we find a lot of people using this early in this day because they can solicit feedback, not just from the booker, but again, from the other five people there. Uh, get those other five people to rate you on Google, let's say. Um, or if they leave you a negative review, if you collect it early on, you can maybe hopefully address the issue while they're still at the property and make sure they do end up leaving you a five-star review on an OTA or you know wherever else they may want to leave a review in the future. And then the last thing is you can just send a message to all your subscribers. That's where we see people and uh, send more of that last minute cancellation. That can get kind of spammy if you overuse it. So typically it's, I recommend something of high value that you're then letting everybody know like, hey, we have this special deal or we have this opening that last minute, uh, do you wanna come stay with us at this time? And that's a cool way to fill in any like last minute vacancies that have come up in your schedule. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I think uh, we're kind of getting towards the end of our questions here. Um, we have Sandra um, waiting in the queue. So I think we'll go to Sandra. Um, so just a last call out there, everyone. Uh, last opportunity to you know throw your questions in the Q&A uh, and then we'll wrap up uh, shortly. I know Talia is a beast getting through all of these. So. <laughs> I know, she's too efficient for me. <laughs> uh, Sandra, would you like to ask your question live? Mm, sure. Oh, sorry. No worries, go ahead. Okay, yeah, okay, you. I can't get the video to come up. Okay, um, so now I thought I was tracking along pretty good, but then when you started talking about the stay fi and the uh, just the other uh, Wi-Fi, so that confused me. Why do we need another Wi-Fi in the home? Yeah, so I'll explain that. So uh, to use Unfortunately, I'll just say up front, the, the, like the router and modem that your typically internet service provider gives you that you have today, like from Comcast, let's say, or Spectrum, it can't support a captive portal. So it can't support the splash page where guests log in. Uh, so the way that we solve this is you get another device from us called an access point that plugs into that router. When you plug the access point into the router, it broadcasts a new Wi-Fi network. So then when you go to your phone or computer to log into the Wi-Fi, you see the old password protected Wi-Fi networks you've been using and a new guest Wi-Fi network that you name. You can still join the old networks with the old password you've been using, but you wanna tell guests to join the new network that the new device you got from us is, is broadcasting that's the network that will then prompt the guests with the splash page. So you're actually separating your guests from using the home's original Wi-Fi, even if that's still running, and asking them to join a new Wi-Fi network that has the splash page. Okay, but they're in the home now. So why are they going to the splash page in the home? Yeah, so I mean, the 
the idea is we want to collect information from all the guests staying there. So, you know, you have guest book, they arrive in the property. When they join the Wi-Fi, the splash page is what will load on their device where they enter in their information. So if you have eight guests booking your property, they all arrive, they go to join the Wi-Fi on their phone, and that's where they'll see your brand and a place to enter in their name and email to get on the internet. Just the same process you would do if you were at a Starbucks and you joined the Wi-Fi and you put your email through their captive portal. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so then you've got that, you've captured their email address, name and email address, right? Yeah, exactly. Of and all so, the people in yeah. there. Yeah, okay. that's exactly now, right. How do I get that information as the owner? How yeah, is that? So, yeah. Yeah. So when you have a Stafi account, uh, you first you create your splash page. So this is what the guest sees. So you can build, you can put in the photo of your home your logo or any like just the name like welcome to Sandra's pad let's say um, and you can say like hey I'm Sandra I run this rental property like thanks for staying um, enter your information and I'll you know you know and you'll get free and fast wi-fi uh, then when they connect there is kind of two places in StayFi you can get the information and one there's a guest list and you'll see the names of all the guests and their emails and you can download that and use it any way you'd like or in StayFi, you can turn on our email marketing tool, and then you can send an email to the people that log into the Wi-Fi through there. And then, like I mentioned before, you can send them a welcome email. So you could send them an email after they log in that says, hey, this is Sandra. I run Sandra's place, Sandra's pad. You know, thanks for booking. If you ever want to book again, you can get a better deal by just like emailing me directly. And that way they all know how to contact you if they want to come back and stay and not go back through uh, Verbo or, or Airbnb. Okay, and then last question. So at that point, now I don't, I have a property manager, so I can, sorry, hospitable, but anyway, I, so I can now like send them to that link. Yeah, so if you have a property manager, you could, if your property manager has a website that has your listing, you mm -hmm. could send them to your property manager's uh, booking site to that listing there. Or you can refer your property manager to me and maybe they will, uh, you know, want to set up the service for all their homes, right? So we can do it either way. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sandra. Great. Thank you, Sandra. Um, so I said that was the last one, but let's maybe just squeeze in one more if that's okay with you, Arthur. Yeah, of course. Cool. Uh, Michael, um, would you like to ask us your question live? Hi, hi, good evening. I um, I have a place in Holland and uh, the guests that come either speak German, French, Dutch or English. And like touch stay, they sort of, um, depending on what uh, browser they use, it sort of automatically goes to their language and so on. I was just wondering if uh, similar uh, with uh, StayFi. So if I have a German, it'll speak to them in German or uh, Dutch or English or whatever other language I, I use? Or is it only a single language? For now, it's really only a single language. Um, the splash page typically, though, doesn't have a lot of information on it. It's not like a touch day guidebook where you're going to have, you know, reams of information. It's going to be welcome to the home and then first name, last name, email. So I'd say if a language barrier on the splash page isn't that bad. Um, other thing to keep in mind is the browser typically can, especially if you use Chrome, will translate it into your preferred language from English. Um, and that's also true for email. So if you send an email uh, only in one language, if they, most people use Chrome, if they open it in that browser, uh, it will translate it for them using Google Translate. Mm -hmm. um, but more languages is something that we are working on in the future. So more to come there. Okay, cool. All right. So at the moment, then, if I send emails and so on, that would only be in the one language unless I separate up um, subgroup the Germans and the French and the English and so on into different. Uh, um... Yeah, you can either you can either segment them or you can send the email with multiple languages. I, th I think the most I've really seen is like bilingual emails in like Quebec in Canada where people send it in English and French. I know it gets harder 
when you just send it in four languages um, and then send the email four times. Um, but I've definitely seen people do emails and marketing in just bilingual picking two languages and presenting them, you know, side by side with each other. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. it's definitely something um, I'm, I'm looking into at the moment. And uh, just by happenstance, um, I have a couple of restaurants next door and the restaurants don't allow them to use any Wi-Fi. So I'm going to put uh, get your system and put up a big fat repeater and they can all sit in the restaurant and use mine and they'll get their numbers yeah so we have a so while our like system is oriented for short-term rentals mm -hmm. it's not restricted to them so you can obviously set it up we have customers that have a hotel and a restaurant and short-term rentals and they use it in all the different locations so you can definitely be creative in where you want to deploy it mm -hmm. we people use it in ski shops because they also own that and their ski rentals so they're collecting emails there right so uh, we don't have a bunch of restaurant and or other location specific features like things like a hospitable integration, but the core product in terms of collecting emails can be used in any type of location. Yeah, well, yeah, no, what I meant was um, I would make mine available. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> we have people do that too, where they uh, collect emails from people that are managing other properties in the building and just get more information. So it's, you know, it's right. Uh, you can get the information from, you know, whoever you offer the Wi-Fi to. Exactly. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I'll be in touch again. We did speak about a year ago or something, or maybe a bit longer, but I'm now uh, getting ready to sort all that out. So what a awesome. take care. Thanks, Go Michael. Ahead. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so that is all we have time for today, I think. Uh, we are very much uh, up uh, against the clock. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thank you especially to Arthur uh, for sharing his wisdom with us and answering lots of questions on StayFi and branding uh, your direct booking business. Um, if you enjoyed today's event, um, stay tuned for our next Hospitable Masterclass. Uh, that will be with Mike O'Connell, uh, Head of Partnerships at Turno, uh, on, the, on 25th of May. Uh, Mike will be sharing he his tips more on fun managing. than I am. Oh, oh, there we go. So you got to tune He's in. A real even more so fun than that. That. Good. Uh, and yeah, he'll be sharing his tips on managing your cleaning team and speaking about kind of the future of operations management uh, from his perspective. Uh, we'll include a registration link for that in the follow-up email. Uh, we'll also include details on that promo code for StayFi. Um, that is uh, hospitable. Am I right? Uh, and how much of a discount does that get you again? It's 50% for the first three months. And then Atalia, who has been diligent, diligently answering everyone's questions, I see her email popped up at atalia at stayfi.com. So if you have any questions, uh, just email her and she can also do a one-on-one -on -one demo with you. Uh, so you can go through like what the platform looks like and the setup process and anything more detailed that we couldn't cover here. Sweet. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you very much again, Arthur. Uh, it's been a great session. Uh, it's been great having you on. Awesome. Thanks, Miles.